morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, and today, we've got some rules updates to look at. Now, they're not the most exciting, they're not the biggest we've ever seen, but there's one that's extremely important if you're in Thailand. There is one that is extremely important for some certain types of decks. And if you're a player in the video games, rather than the trading card games, you might have had a little bit of a heart attack when you found out that Rayquaza just got banned. Except apparently it didn't get banned, but it sure does look like it got banned. But we have had confirmation from a TPCI employee that it is in fact not banned. I'll explain in a moment. So starting off then, the nicest rule I think we got this time round. Thai cards are now considered local language in Thailand. This is really cool. Now, I have shown you a video about the fact that Thai cards are now legal in Thailand. And it makes me rather happy that if you Google Pokemon Thailand, my video comes up before the Pokemon Thailand video. I know I shouldn't be so happy about that, but I am. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I had so many people from Thailand getting in touch going, Wossie, please, can you let everyone know about the TCG in Thailand that I'm kind of happy that it's all worked out quite nicely. And it's worked out so well that firstly, they're pretty much up to date with us in terms of releases now, which is awesome. Incidentally, they're not catching up properly they're only doing like sun and moon they're not going any further back but they are basically catching up and now if you're in thailand you can use thai cards by which i mean you have to use thai cards now remember the rule ladies and gentlemen when you're competing in a pokemon trading card game tournament you have to use cards from your local language which means if you're a thai player you are expected to use thai cards similarly if you're in america you have to use english cards if you're canadian you can use french cards and if you're anywhere in europe you can use any european language cards because apparently all european languages are spoken by everyone in europe cool now what is rather important they've just implemented a new rule which deals with what happens when games are unable to reach a natural end during single elimination rounds. Now remember, if we're in Swiss, it really doesn't matter. Because in Swiss rounds, there is such a thing as a tie. Fun fact, officially it needs to be called a tie, not a draw, because draw could refer to drawing a card off the top of your deck. But during Swiss rounds, we all have those games where you're just not going to find an end. Or you're not going to find an end for a very long time. So they end up in a tie and you're absolutely fine. The problem is, in a single elimination round, you don't get ties. It, it, it doesn't happen, ladies and gentlemen. So what happens when we have a perpetual game state? Well, the rulebook has been updated to let us know what does happen if you have a perpetual game state. In extremely rare occasions, players may encounter a situation in which it is impossible for a game to reach a natural conclusion without outside assistance. For example, when it is impossible for either player's deck to take any further prize cards. While incomplete games do not count towards the match score during Swiss rounds, each game must conclude with a winner being determined during single elimination rounds. Frankly, if a game doesn't finish in Swiss, if game one doesn't finish, boom, tie, sorted. Therefore, the following resolution may be implemented during single elimination rounds only. The match time must have elapsed, you can't be jumping in before the game's over. Plus three turns must have been completed, when time runs out, you get three turns. The active player finishes their turn, then their opponent gets a turn, they get a turn, their opponent gets a turn, done. And the head's judge must be satisfied that the loop is infinite and unbreakable by either player. That the intention of both players is to avoid their own loss and not simply to prolong the game by not advancing the game state. That continuing play without a concession from either player would result in a game without end. From the point at which a decision is made, the head judge informs both players of their observation. A further plus three turns will then be played, with the current turn being turn zero. If the game remains unresolved, the players must play a tiebreaker game to determine the winner of that unresolved game. So the judge might look at the game and go, all right, 
no one's winning this game. Let's say for argument's sake, both players are only playing double colorless energy and they're playing four of them. And let's say that both players are playing cards like Enhanced Hammer or Zero Aura. Nobody has any energy left. There is going to be no more prize cards taken. But both players have got a way to avoid decking out. More on that in a minute. The judge goes, all right. But you're both playing attacking Pokemon, you're both playing energy, we might be able to have a tiebreaker game, first one to take a prize wins. If the head judge observes the situation to repeat during the tiebreaker game, then from the point at which a decision is made, the head judge informs both players under observation, a further plus three turns will be played with the current turn being turn zero. After this point, the player who was seeded highest in Swiss rounds will be declared the winner. If the head judge determines that the loot will inevitably reoccur during any tiebreaker game, you go straight to the highest seeding player winning. Now, this is extremely important, again, going back to ties. Because you often see players, they go, right, I need to get five more points in order to make it to top eight. So I'm going to win one game. Oh, I've won one game. Right. I need two points. I've got two games remaining. I am going to intentionally draw or tie my last two rounds to guarantee my space in top eight. You do that. But if you then end up making top eight as the eighth seeded player, you could end up losing a game because you intentionally tied and ended up lower down the seedings. Now, the good news is this is not going to be a concern for every player. There are going to be very few decks which can actually create an infinite loop. But we have seen examples of this. So let's take something like Waylord Stall that we have seen and still do sometimes see and expand it. The entire point of the deck is look at my Waylord, you can't knock it out. Look how much HP it has. Now, knocking out Pokemon and either clearing your opponent's bench or taking six prizes are two of the win conditions in the Pokemon trading card game, but they're not the only ones. You win the game if your opponent is unable to draw a card at the beginning of their turn. That is, in fact, how Waylord intends to win. But all you need is something as simple as, say, a judge and a copy of Lusamine, and you can create a proper infinite loop. Because Judge tells you to, both players, shuffle their hands into their deck and draw four cards. And Lusamine allows you to grab two in any combination of supporters and stadium cards from your discard pile to your hand. Now, if you're playing two Lusamine and one Judge, you play a Judge and you play a Lusamine to grab a Lusamine and a Judge. And then before you deck out, you play a Judge. So you end up with a hand of 40 cards, play a Judge to go down to four. And then at some point in the future, you play a Lusamine to get back a Lusamine and a Judge. You've got to be playing two Lusamine so that you can keep playing Lusamine to recover Lusamine. And then you can constantly Judge when you're about to run out of cards. You'll never deck out. And if both players are playing Waylord, neither player will ever deck out. A more contemporary example might be a deck revolving around Oranguru. Oranguru's got resource management and aims to win not by taking prizes, though it usually plays a couple of energy and attacking Pokemon, but by just running your opponent out of cards. And for one energy, put three cards from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck in any order. Now, they often play Slow King here as well to Lost Zone some cards. So if there was a situation where neither player was able to get rid of energy and both the Oranguru had energy on, then you could just have a situation where both players resource management constantly to make sure that they never ran out of cards. It's not going to happen often, but it can happen and that's kind of the point here. So to break it down, why is this rule important? If you're playing a deck like Waylord, like Oranguru, that could potentially create an infinite loop, you need to be extremely careful taking an intentional tie during Swiss, because it could end up losing you the game if you play against another infinite loop deck. Now, there's one other piece of news, which was initially terrifying for VGC competitors. The rule was updated under Pokemon, with an official ruling, Pokemon in a player's battle team may not know the move Dragon Ascent. 
Well, that's pretty gosh darned important because Rayquaza can only Mega Evolve into Mega Rayquaza if it knows the move Dragon Ascent. If you don't know Dragon Ascent, you cannot Mega Evolve, which means this one little line in the rule book effectively banned Mega Rayquaza from competitive play. This was initially, like I said, terrifying, because a bunch of players like playing Mega Rayquaza, but the lovely Joe from Cerebi.net did tweet out about this and did receive a reply from a TPCI employee stating, this is an error in the document and people are working on fixing it ASAP. Mega Rayquaza is not banned. So although it initially looked like they'd banned Mega Rayquaza, they have not banned Mega Rayquaza. Now to be clear, a tweet from a TPCI employee is not an official ruling, but by the same token, they would not state something like that so definitively unless they were absolutely 100% sure that it would be made official. So although for the moment, Mega Rayquaza is banned, as I sit here recording this, Mega Rayquaza is banned. I think by the time you get to your next tournament, it'll be unbanned. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the rules update for now. Next time there's a rules update, you know it's going to be covered on this channel. So, you know, maybe if you're not subscribed, you get to that ASAP. For now, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wossy. Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. And do make sure you tell me what you think about these rules in the comment section. I encourage you to go nuts while imploring you to be nice. And, you know, maybe you check out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. Get yourself some bonus podcasts. Tell me what videos to make. Yeah, we're doing all the plugs in the wrong order today. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.